Hello friends, Pandar here. I'm back with another video. Today that February 2022 visa bulletin is out. So we are going to take a look at it. There are some interesting things regarding EB2 India and not so interesting thing about EB3 India. You probably know what I mean because you must have seen the visa bulletin already. But let me put my perspective it and I will also talk about some of the other things that are happening in the in the Congress. Also some common questions that people have asked me. So if you are interested in this topic, watch this video until the end and let's get started. If you are here for the first time, welcome. My name is Mandar and I make immigration related videos for US and Canada. I'm not an immigration lawyer, so anything that I see on this video or on my channel is for information purpose only. And for your specific immigration needs before you take any action, you should hire a competent immigration lawyer. Now in some other news, you must have seen that uh, the Congress is now moving towards the, uh, basically the Democrat government is now moving towards the voting rights bill. So they, they were talking about the BBB bill, be, uh, build back better bill until end of last year. So they had planned to move that bill and get that bill approved, uh, but they were not able to do so. And that was because of the two centrist senators that mentioned that they are not going to support it. So now their focus is on the voting rights bill. And just today we got an information that uh, the filibuster rule about 60 voting, they were going to change the rules of the Senate to break that 60 vote rule and just make 50 votes uh, enough for passing any legislation. And Kristen Sinema, who is the Democratic Senator from Arizona, she mentioned that she is not going to support that. So what's going to happen now is none of these bills are going to be on the happy path. Basically, uh, anything other than the reconciliation will need 60 votes to continue. So let's see what happens. Um, uh, my point is coming back to the BBB bill, which had the immigration clauses in it, they were removed by the Senate parliamentarian. So uh, I don't hope for them to be added back in the bill, even if the uh, some version of the bill back better gets passed during this year. I think it will still get passed, but whether or not those immigration reform clauses are included is to be seen. So we'll, we'll talk about that when that comes. Now let's focus our attention back to uh, our visa bulletin. Now, as usual, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a side by side comparison of a January visa bulletin, which is the current visa bulletin to February 2022 visa bulletin. I'll continue to repeat this for the month of January, which is 31st of January. You will still continue to use the January visa bulletin. The, if your date has become current in the February visa bulletin, you can still uh, start to prepare your paperwork. Say for instance, EB2 India has already further progressed. So if your date is now current, you can start collecting the paperwork, but you cannot submit your application for 485 until 1st of February, according to the February visa bulletin. So with that said, let's look at the family section first and then we'll go, go into the employment section later. I have some perspective regarding what is happening with the backlog countries, uh, specifically EB2 and EB3. And uh, so continue to watch this video. So let's start with the family section first. So as you can see, I have the uh, January visa bulletin on the left and February visa bulletin on the right. Now let's first look at the family based category for final action chart, which is the first chart. Uh, as you can see, if you compare each date from these columns, F1, F2A, F2B, F3 and F4, you can see that there are absolutely no date changes. So there is no point in me going through each and every date because nothing has changed. Basically, they have taken exact snapshot of the last month's visa bulletin, which is January, and uh, just pasted it into the February visa bulletin. There is no date date change whatsoever. We used to see uh, Mexico and Philippines at least progress a little bit, but in this particular one, there is nothing changed. What does that tell us is that they have enough demand to meet the visa numbers or to use up all the visa numbers in the family based category. So they don't see a need to progress any dates either in the filing date chart or the final final action date chart uh, to create any more demand because there are no absolutely no extra visa numbers available to fulfill that demand. So basically the dates are stuck. And this was the theme since last several months. And this is going to be the continuation for the next uh, uh, next several months at the least. Now let's look at 
if something has changed on the filing chart because remember um, the uh, family based category always uses the filing date chart uh, to submit your uh, your 485 we, uh, so in even in the filing date chart if you look at f1 uh, category it is same dates throughout even the mexico and philippines date they usually change they are still the same uh, f2a is also same across f2b is also same f3 and f4 are also same so again as i said they see no reason to advance these dates in any of these categories because there are no visas uh, extra visas available to cater to those extra demands so these dates are going to be the exact same and if you are in the process you are in the process if you are waiting you'll still have to wait for a few uh, few more months for these uh, to see any kind of movement in the fb category so that is really unfortunate now let's look at the employment based category now let's look at the final action chart for employment based preference category so eb1 as you can see is current throughout so it remains current in the final action chart as well second preference category which is eb2 it's current for all chargeability it has moved from 22nd january 2019 to 1st of march 2019 so eb2 has moved by about uh, about a month and a half about five weeks i would say for china el salvador guatemala honduras they remain current india now this is interesting india eb2 has moved from july 8th 2012 to 1st of january 2013 so this is a progression of uh, what six months which is interesting because i thought they would progress by two to three months but they are progressing eb2 india by six months in the final action chart what this means is the the capacity that they had forecasted for the full year is being met quite fast and they are still having a lot more number of visas available than there are applicants so you will see something interesting in the filing date chart as well usually that filing date chart date does not move once it is set at the beginning of the year but this time they have progressed it but interestingly in the final action chart they have moved by six months so good news for eb2 india that your dates have progressed that means a lot number of people are going to get their uh, green cards who have been waiting for a while now eb3 in all chargeability uh, has remained current china has progressed has not progressed at all for final action chart it remains at 22nd march of 2018 uh, for india eb3 has remained the same 15th of january 2012 this is really sad because we uh, i was expecting to see at least some moment but there is absolutely no mo moment for eb2 india eb3 india and they are stuck now remember what has happened in the past a lot of people had downgraded the petitions throughout the last year throughout the uh, fiscal year 2021 right from october 2020 to september there were a lot of people who were downgrading the petitions from eb2 to eb3 because we were seeing eb3 dates moving faster much rapid pace than eb2 now what has happened that that whole thing has caught up now you are seeing that those the people who have downgraded have left a hole or vacuum in eb2 which is now progressing the eb2 dates forward and eb3 is now stalled this is precisely because all the all those downgrades so now if you are in the process or if you are downgrading don't downgrade at all i'm going to talk about it a little bit further but let's keep going uh, for the rest of the chart i think the dates are exactly the same in the final action chart so now let's look at the filing date chart and there is something interesting here in the filing date chart all the dates are same except for one basically for eb2 india the dates have progressed by um, about two months so uh, eb2 india uh, for january visa bulletin it was J july 8th of 2013 now it's september 1st of 2013 so they have progressed by two months what does this tell you this tells you that eb3 india is going to move forward and i will not be surprised if they move these dates even more further now this is again to do with all these downgrade petitions though so that's creating a, a vacuum or a void in eb2 
which is allowing the dates to progress because a lot of those applications that were uh, supposed to be in EB2 now are taking effect in EB3. So now EB3 petitions are moving forward. They are getting, um, uh, they are coming to a point where now they are uh, viable and now EB2 uh, petitions are getting dropped for those candidates. So that's why re, uh, that's why we are seeing EB2 progressing. While these uh, while these dates are continuing to progress, I will I will expect to see some kind of a slowdown in the later part of this year. The reason is because there are some upgrade petitions also happening. Now this is like jumping the queue. Uh, it, is, it is so predictable. Now people jump queues they, when EB3 was moving faster they wanted to downgrade. Now EB2 is moving faster now they want to upgrade. So uh, in, my, in my mind if you are within 6 months to a year of your date getting current why bother downgrading and upgrading. I would say stay in your lane stay put stay with your company your day will come don't waste your money in upgrades and downgrades eventually what is going to happen is both are going to catch up with this downgrades and upgrades and downgrades again and upgrades again there is going to be this is going to all level out so eventually what we will see within six months to a year down the line both of these will start moving at the same pace so eb Three, EB2 progression will slow down and EB3 stalled which is stalled right now will pick up a little bit and they will start moving at the same pace and then the dates will also get very very closer to, uh, to each other that's my speculation so I repeat it again if you are within six months to a year of your dates becoming current don't bother downgrading or upgrading save your money stick in the lane and uh, your green card will come at certain date so that was all from the visa bulletin perspective. Now, if I scroll down, I don't see any any kind of uh, mm, chat with Charlie kind of uh, interview happening with uh, State Department. Uh, so that's really unfortunate because I, 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 I loved those. Now let's look at if they have updated upcoming, uh, what is the chart that they are going to use? So they haven't changed it so far because by the end of the day, I think they do. Uh, but if by the time they, I post this video, if they have updated uh, the, uh, the, the, which chart should be used, I'll, I'll mention that in my video as well. So uh, for January visa bulletin, the employment based preference category will still continue to use filing chart. Uh, they haven't mentioned what's happen, what's going to happen for February visa bulletin. Uh, given what uh, given the changes that are happening typically uh, typically USCIS reverts back to filing final action date chart uh, in January itself the fact that they haven't done in this year uh, leads me to believe that uh, it's a 50 50 percent chance whether they will flip back to final action date chart or filing date chart by the time I post this video if that information is available I'll update it in the video now that said i wanted to cover a couple of other uh, points uh, that is there are some people who are mentioning that uh, they are in eb1 their date has been current and they applied for their 485 in uh, 2020 october or november as soon as their dates become current and they still haven't gotten their green card and this is very unusual eb1 used to be like super fast they used to people i know people who have got their green card within three months now not that that is still not happening still, there are still some people that are getting their green cards very fast after they apply specifically in eb1 but there is a vast majority that are stuck in uh, some service centers like texas and nebraska which has slowed down significantly now texas as you all know we have talked about this uh, quite a few times that they are uh, extremely backlogged and uh, the pace at which they are processing the applications compared to the number of pending applications it's going to take years to uh, complete that backlog so unless they start reshuffling these uh, applications into different um, processing centers things are not looking very good so expect to see at least a year or year and a half worth of wait time even if your date is current to, uh, to actually get your green card now i also want to mention that if you have specific uh, questions regarding your situation and if you want to talk to me or get my opinion remember i'm not a lawyer i cannot give a legal advice but you, if you want a friendly advice from me based on my experience and based on my knowledge uh, i'm happy to do so visit my patreon site and that is the best way i can respond i can tell you there are so many number of emails and messages that i get on my instagram and all and i really physically i cannot look at all of them 
so uh, i apologize in advance if somebody has sent me an email regarding their situation because you guys take time in writing those things to me but i just can't get to them because of uh, sheer volume of the emails that i get now that's the reason i started the patreon because that's that's where uh, only serious people come to me and then i get a chance to kind of uh go through uh, a certain set of questions uh, that i really look closely and take my time to respond and remember that is again not a legal advice it is only from my experience as a friendly advice so if you really need to talk to me patreon is the best way to get to you get to me so that's all i wanted to say in this video if you like the content of this video please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel and i'll see you in the next one